God, may the presence of Jesus Christ fill our hearts with light and hope as we worship today. Let us pray. God of hope, you are the light that shines in the darkness. You are the flame that guides us on the journey. You illuminate the world so that all of its brilliant colors may witness to your glory. God of hope, help us to put our faith and trust in you. Open our eyes so that we may see you transforming your creation. Give us the courage to resist evil, injustice, and oppression. God of hope, you are the light that shines in the darkness. May your light of hope shine in our hearts. May we be like Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord all the earth. Be happy, rejoice out loud, sing your praises. Sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music, with trumpets and a horn blast. Shout triumphantly, triumphantly before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar, the world and all its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud all together before the Lord, because He is coming to establish justice on earth. He will establish justice in the world rightly, he will establish justice among all people fairly. According to the scripture, Psalms 98, the Lord has made his salvation widely known. 
Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. This psalm is full of salvation imagery, but some of the imagery is difficult to imagine. Rivers flow wildly or calmly, but I have trouble envisioning the river's hands clapping. In 1965, I went on a float trip down the Yampa and Green Rivers in western Colorado and eastern Utah. I saw some wildly flowing rivers and rapids so fierce that the rafts had to be guided with ropes from the shores, and the people rafting had to get out and walk. Rocks in the river set up a roaring cacophony of sound as the water surged over them. I can picture a marching band loudly playing, drums banging, cymbals clashing, joyfully moving along as the drum major's arms move, keeping all the various elements in sync. While I can't quite get the picture of a river clapping its hands, I can see the drum major gesticulating wildly. The beat of the music has the audience tapping their feet and clapping their hands. You can't help getting involved in the music. All the noises of nature, loud and rejoicing, seem to be announcing the coming salvation. Salvation means protection from harm. Throughout this past year, many of us in the Desert Southwest Conference have participated in activities recommended by the Race Coalition. We have been made aware of the harm being done to our brothers and sisters who do not identify as white Americans. Many of us learned that harm was done even by those of us who were totally unaware of the harm we were doing or had done. However, God was aware, and through the work of the coalition, he is leading us in singing a new song. With injustice in the world ever present, the idea that all injustice will someday be resolved is a matter to be celebrated. Only God can achieve such a result. While we await God's no-injustice solution, can we do anything in the interim? What one person sees as injustice, another sees the same thing as deserved retribution. What I think I deserve as adequate food and shelter is very different to what the average person, who by the luck of the location of their birth lives in the third world, feels is adequate food and shelter. Many people of the third world recognize this difference as injustice. Should we wait and expect God to magically do something, or should we be God's hands on earth? With God's help, we can begin to address the smaller, closer injustices as we find them all around us. With God's help, we can learn to value and respect all persons more than material wealth. We can join with nature rejoicing in advance for the triumph to come when God will rule the world justly and its peoples with faithfulness. So be it. Amen. Eu tô o meu vete ato o cai de mau ofa o hangue go ofa o mau fa mata mata que me ngai to onga o ne ta palasia e si hifo e maman coin o mau fa ngo turi Ke tangi mai ho mau kaunga api. O ku mau hoko ko hakakai o ku fai filifili mana ko. Na ke hoko mai ko hui ko toko taha ko tope. Ko ho finangalo ke mau fe ofa ake. O ku mau fa maru atu ke ho fa more more o ku ne fa foki ho maru au marie. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, 
and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. If you are listening to this sermon, I hope that your pastor is taking some much needed time off. This is the purpose of this sermon and worship aids, to provide your pastor the chance to catch their breath and enjoy some family during this holiday season. You know, we've learned a lot about online worship during the global pandemics. And one important lesson is that you can't go too long with an online sermon. Unlike in-person preaching, where the congregation is pretty captive, folks can turn you off literally if you're not very interesting online. Now, even if they doze off, which can be pretty common during in-person preaching, one just has to reach over and turn off the audio video and enjoy a good nap. So I've concluded that uh, a good online sermon should last around 8 to 12 minutes maximum go any longer and it's bye-bye video and preacher. (laughs) I'm sure you won't complain if we stick to this time limit today. We've allowed for an open time frame for this preaching video. Some of you may see this before Christmas and some of you after during the early part of the new year. Either way, our theme of light uh, and the darkness will work. For you see, The global pandemics of COVID-19, worldwide racism, and climate destruction has cast a dark cloud over all of our lives. We live in hard times, and we often lose our way because it's so dark and ominous. My youngest son, Trent, is an adult now with children of his own. But I can still remember he would wake up in the middle of the night and declare, I'm afraid of the dark, Dad. I would usually reply like a typical adult, there's nothing to be afraid of, Trent. The doors are all locked. Your sisters and parents are in nearby rooms. But he would reply, I'm still afraid of the dark, Dad. Foolishly, I would stick to adult logic. But there's nothing to be afraid of, Trent. There's nothing in the dark. How easy it is for us to forget children's logic. Of course there are things in the dark for children. Scary, evil, frightening things that hide in the darkness and wait to pounce on us. I'm afraid of the dark. How many of us have that same feeling? Maybe not of the physical darkness, but the symbol of what darkness represents, disease, destruction, desolation, and death. From the dark oil spill off our coast, the vigilante killings by a 17-year-old with an assault rifle at night, to the dark night of our souls when drive-by shootings take the life of innocent children in in their own homes. We have seen our share of all these things in the past year and a half. And we're all a little afraid of what they represent. But what we need to remember is the darkness is not bad, nor is the light all good. In some Asian cultures, we have the reverse value. Dark clothes are good and white clothes are negative. As human beings, darkness is conducive to good sleep, and too much light from the sun produces skin cancers, which are very bad. As we look at the scripture passage for today, it would not be very smart of me to take on a theological prologue prologue of the Gospel of John in a very short sermon. But still, unlike the very human 
nativity scenes in the Synoptic Gospels, John begins with a theological statement. Many scholars comment on how he draws from the creation story in Genesis for many of the images here, going back into the beginning of time to create all that is. What is the first thing that God makes? The light. John mirrors this imagery and ties Jesus to the light of the world created in the beginning. I'm struck by how John couples life with light, such that the life of Jesus was the light of all people. And then comes that famous line, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Going back to my young son, Trent, when he was afraid of the dark, what would help him was this. I would say, how about if we keep a night light on in your room, Trent? And he would reply, okay, Dad, but can you stay here a little while? Sure, Trent. That's a pretty potent combination. Light in your dad to fight off the forces of the dark. And sure enough, when that light came on, his fear would subside and he would fall asleep rather quickly. Darkness has been no stranger throughout all of history. It was a reality in Jesus' own time. Remember, Mary and Joseph are turned away from a lighted inn to take refuge in a dark stable. Jesus is born in pitch darkness. Herod has all the babies in Bethlehem killed to eliminate the one who is predicted to be king. Darkness and death were no strangers to Jesus. And yet, and yet, a silent star beams into this darkness. And amid the killings, a baby survives. This is the heart of the gospel message. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Christ shines in our lives like a beacon of light. And as potent as the darkness is in our world, Christ's light cannot be extinguished. It shall not be extinguished. Now, whether you're hearing this at the close of the year or the beginning of the new year, we as Christians must bear witness to this light. We as Christians must reflect this light into a dark world. We as Christians must shine with this light to lead the way out of darkness, out of COVID and its variants, out of racism, out of our climate destruction. We must reflect the light of Christ in this hurting world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Let me close today with this old story. A successful business, businessman had no children but three nephews. He was getting old, and he knew he had to appoint his successor. He called the three nephews to explain the situation and then set up a test for them. He gave them each the same amount of money and sent them off to secure that which would fill a room of the same size to the maximum amount. The nephew who filled the room the most would inherit his business. They all went off. And at the appointed time, the first nephew returned with bales of hay. And although there were a lot, it only filled the room halfway. The next nephew came and he had purchased down feathers. And when they were released in the room, it flew everywhere. But when they had settled down, only secured about two thirds of the space. The third nephew did not return on time. 
The two other nephews said it, it was too late and one of them must be declared the winner. But the uncle said, let's give him a little bit more time. And sure enough, as the day gave way to the darkness, the third nephew arrived, but seemingly with nothing with him. He then to explained to his uncle that he had spent most of the day in a small church, praying for some insight. He gave most of the money through a collection offering to the poor. And upon leaving, he purchased a small candle and a match with a few coins he had left. He then placed the candle in the middle of the room. And when he lit it, the flight filled every corner of the dark room. The uncle knew instantly that he possessed the wisdom to be his successor. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus at the close of 2021 or the beginning of 2022, behold, the light has come. Behold, Jesus has come. Amen.
receive this blessing. Love is present with us. Therefore, go into the world to spread love's light. And the grace of the Christ child which transforms the world, the love of the God who never ceases to amaze us, and the fellowship of the Spirit who never wearies will be with you this holy day and forevermore. Go in peace and be the light for the world. Amen.